Uh, we know that uh, from my lab in two mouse models of cancer, one was breast cancer, one was liver cancer. Yeah. Um, and this was done in the lab that's co-run by Lindsay Wu down at uh, Sydney, that NMN did not accelerate any cancer in those two models. In fact, in the breast cancer model, it actually slowed the growth of cancer. Okay. So in my hands, we haven't seen any evidence for it. Uh, we fed NMN to mice for many, many months, I think. Actually, we, we fed it for them for the whole lifespan, and there was no increase spontaneous cancer yeah okay so where does this idea come from there are two reasons to question the possibility of cancer uh, again they're in mice so one is comes from a study that we showed that nmn boosts blood vessel formation okay. so we didn't look in cancer but we looked in muscle and when you give nmn to a mouse an old mouse it will have more muscle uh, more blood vessels and it will have better blood flow and we also published with, with another group that the brain gets better blood flow as well. Okay. Which is all good for aging. Um, it may not be good for cancer. If you have a big tumor that needs blood flow, uh, I would be cautious, very cautious actually, that NMN or maybe resveratrol, I'm not sure about resveratrol, it hasn't been studied. Um, but uh, so that's one concern. If, if I had a big tumor, I probably wouldn't take NMN just to be safe. Okay. Um, and then the second thing was um, there was a study that came out of Washington University in uh, St. Louis. And what they, they showed in this study was that if you took a brain cancer cell line and you knocked down NAD levels, so you, you got rid of the enzyme that makes NAD. Okay. Now, now those cells didn't grow very well and they didn't make, uh, it was a glioblastoma in the brain. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what does that prove? Well, it proves that cells need NAD to survive, to grow well. We knew that a hundred years ago. That's not a surprise. Yeah. But the experiment that they needed to do was to increase NAD and show if that causes cancer, which they didn't show. They didn't test that. Yeah. And where what happened was the publicity department at the university wrote a press release that says that this work shows that NAD can cause cancer, which is not what they showed. Uh, and it, it, it went all over the internet, unfortunately, which is a misinterpretation of that data. Good to know. Right. So basically, in simple language, if you take four wheels off a car, it won't drive. But if you put six wheels on a car, will it go six times faster? No. Well, or, you know, put eight wheels on a car, will it go twice as fast? No, it won't. So you cannot interpret an experiment that goes one direction and say, oh, if you do the opposite, the opposite will happen. Yeah. So that's why uh, I continue to take NMN. I haven't seen anything that concerns me. If, it, if I did, you know, I, I'm not crazy. I would stop immediately and tell the world that I've stopped taking it. Um, and my, my father as well. I, I certainly wouldn't want my father to harm himself at age 80. Um, and then there's the clinical trials. We've been doing safety studies with NAD boosting molecules. Other labs, probably four other labs have done this in humans and not seen anything yet. But, you know, again, I'm a scientist, so I would say uh, we need long-term studies. We need to test for five years and look at thousands of people, and that would tell us if there's a worry. Well, so most of these studies, actually, there's only two main studies have been done in mice. So here's, here's what they are. There was one, again, out of Washington University by a different group that found that knocking down the levels of NAD in brain tumors slowed the growth of the tumor. And unfortunately, the new story ended up being, oh, NAD causes cancer, which is not the same, right? That's the complete opposite. So that study, uh, I, I wouldn't put a lot of stock into, but there is, there is one other study that came out in 2019 by Naccarelli, uh, and they found that NAMPT, this NAD boosting gene, uh, it increases the number of senescent cells and makes them more inflammatory, giving out these SASP proteins, as they're called, the senescence associated secretory phenotype is the word. Uh, but also there were mice that were predisposed to pancreatic cancer. And when given NMN, they developed more precancerous and cancerous growths when they consumed this NMN. Exactly how it works, we're not sure, but it might be because it 
was down-regulating a tumor suppressor gene called P53. But remember, we fed NMN to mice, but normal mice, not predisposed. And if anything, they live longer and healthier. So it's a question whether it's this predisposition that's the difference. Then we're in new territory. Mm -hmm. So for instance, NAD boosters, I take those. Mm -hmm. If you give those to mice, they have new blood vessels. It's like a super drug for athletes. Okay. They, they can run further. Okay. Uh, but it also, you don't want extra blood vessels growing in your tumor. Right. Okay, good point. So I think that with an abundance of caution, mm. anyone who has a, a tumor, don't take these things. Okay. But it's not going to necessarily grow a tumor okay. if you don't have one already. Yes. So um, NR, you know, we showed um, years ago that uh, NR is protective against chemotherapeutic neuropathy. The data were strong enough to... Um, you know, support a uh, clinical trial in, in that space that was initiated at University of Iowa, my former um, institution. There are other folks that are planning subsequent trials. Um, we know that higher NAD status is um, AIDS uh, DNA repair. And um, we've shown that, and, and Donna Hammond and others have shown that um, NR doesn't block the effectiveness of um, cancer chemotherapy. It, it um, suppresses um, tumor formation. There was a, a very low quality study that um, gave everybody this big you know, metastasis uh, scare. But then uh, there's a subsequent study that shows that when you look at carcinogenesis and and um, the hallmarks of cancer that higher NAD status is protective. So, so we think that higher NAD status is really, you know, important for prevention of cancer, and um, that it, you know it's not going to um, inhibit effectiveness of cancer treatment or or, or anything like that. It's a lot of uh, evidence that boosting NAD can well likely can help uh, the prevention of cancer. That's because NAD is required to repair damaged DNA. And as you know, uh, DNA mutates, and that's the major reason for the development of cancer. And if the DNA repair mechanism is works better, you are uh, more likely to be able to prevent the cancer from developing. So that's the first uh, uh, point. The second point is uh, when the NAD level is optimal, the immune system works better. So you have a better anti-tumor immunity. And so we all have cancer cells in our body. And we do not, not every one of us develops cancer. That's because our immune system is constantly surveying our body for the presence of cancer cells and eliminating them uh, when they are encountered. And the third potential mechanism that NAD can help pre uh, cancer prevention is the reduction of inflammation. Uh, inflammation is uh, one of the underlying um, causes of many uh, different diseases, including cancer. So overall, I think the cancer is really, well, NAD is really important for cancer prevention. But when it comes down to a patient who has active cancer, uh, we don't really know uh, whether NAD boosting is going to be beneficial or harmful. Because in a patient with active cancer, you have two opposite forces in play. One is the anti-tumor immunity, DNA repair, and the second one is the potential increase of cell proliferation, including cancer cell proliferation. And whether the anti-tumor immunity force and the cancer proliferation force uh, when in a patient is really very difficult to predict. And I don't think what 
ever ever going to know whether NAD boosting is going to be beneficial or harmful uh, to a cancer patient because it's so person dependent. Uh, it depends on the cancer types. It depends on uh, the immune system of the person. And yeah. so for that reason, I think we want to take NAD to prevent the cancer, yeah. but we want to be very cautious uh, as to whether someone should take NAD uh, products when cancer is active in the person. That's kind of what we know uh, up to date. Yeah, so, so cancer's kind of been my biggest concern, you know, going into this. And, and I think for, for a lot of people in the field, that, that definitely stands out as, as a potential risk. Um, I mean, there's reasons to think either way. So there's, there's actually a, a mouse model that gets spontaneous liver cancer that turns out to be caused by NAD deficiency. And you give supplemental NAD precursors and completely cure that mouse. <laughs> you know, so there's, there's reasons to be excited that it could be an anti-cancer therapy. Um, but at the same time, you know, the, we use a liver regeneration model where it, NAD you know, makes it go faster. And that, that looks a lot like liver cancer. <laughs> you know, so you worry about in other scenarios, it, it might actually turn out to be bad. And there's evidence that it increases stem cell function. And so what sort of makes cancer is resistant to therapy a lot of times is, is tumor stem cells. So you wonder how that's going to translate into the cancer scenario. Um, so what I can say is, you know, there, there's lots of reasons to be concerned. Um, at the same time, people have done cancer models and it so far doesn't seem to be a concern. We did some experiments in my own lab that aren't published specifically to try to show that it would boost cancer growth and it didn't when we supplemented NAD levels. Um, right. So I feel a little better about that. There've been a couple of studies in mice where people have treated them through the end of their lifespan and mice die almost exclusively of cancer. And you know, it hasn't shortened their lifespan. There hasn't been any, any indication that those mice got more cancer. Um, so I'm cautiously optimistic that this is going to, to not be a huge risk. Um, but there's certainly, you know, uh, we're, we're not ready to be confident that it's not yet. <laughs> there is a theory that decreased NAD in tumors would actually prevent the PARP enzymes uh, from repairing tumors DNA and hence make the tumor more sensitive to chemotherapy. So this is why PARP inhibitors actually used for, uh, for, uh, for treatment cancers. But um, we actually have evidence that uh, in mice, there is no increase in tumor growth when taking NMN. And this has been shown in multiple studies. And not only that, but um, in humans, there was a study uh, where uh, participants that previously had skin cancer, um, after the, the, the cancers were removed, they were uh, taking NAD boosters. And not only there was no stimulation of, of new growth of cancer cells, but they they uh, it, it looked like the, the NAD boosting supplementation basically um, made healthy cells to grow um, to, to grow faster. So this is really interesting. And the reason why cancer and NMN are, are, are brought up together sometimes is that um, in the biology of aging and in the biology of cancer, there are some similarities. So there are some, some genes that are upregulated, such as uh, HIF1, so, so this is a hypoxia gene, and so on. There is a complex uh, role of NAD in cancer. But however, what we're seeing is that it looks like we still don't understand the mechanism very well. But what we're seeing in terms of the evidence is that NAD supplementation definitely doesn't cause cancer. It's important to always say that in many biological process, there are some processes that we still don't understand how they work and they sure. they could potentially um, you know, uh, act as a double-edged sword. But this doesn't mean that everyone would be affected. So for instance, you know, there is the study with the, uh, uh, with the skin cancer that has shown that NAD um, boosters are not, um, you know, are, are, are not bad for, uh, for patients that previously had skin cancer. However, this doesn't mean that more research doesn't need to be done. Of course, we need to kind of investigate different kinds of cancers and how they are affected um, and so on. And also there are other processes that could uh, that uh, could be beneficial in one context, but not in other. But this doesn't mean that they are bad processes. So the same applies to, let's say, the process of photophagy in the cell, which is the process by 
in which the cell is kind of clearing up uh, toxins and the junk proteins that are floating around in the cell because autophagy is a very, very beneficial process. And um, in cancer, in some cancers, actually, um, they're hijacking this mechanism of autophagy in order to survive. So wow. it's not that the autophagy process is really bad for you. It's actually really, really good. And, you know, this is why people do intermittent fasting and all these things. But yeah. uh, in some particular instances, it might be um, it might be bad. However, we know how to modulate this. There are some autophagy inhibitors that could be applied um, locally and so on. And, you know, this goes on with, with, with um, th this applies to different processes in the cell. And there is no such thing as categorizing one particular process in the cell as being very bad in all contexts. We just need more research. However, um, just to summarize, uh, definitely the data that uh, I'm seeing so far look very, very good. And, you know, even in, uh, in a mouse cancer model where mice already had tumors and they were supplemented with NMN, the tumors didn't show accelerated growth. So this was a really nice study as well.